Redskins. What's happening, everybody? It's your boy Bags, along with Tim and El Sacco here. Uh, we're just going to kind of do like a, a run through video of all of our uh, beach cast um, combos of what we use on the beach, what we've got in our bags, and then like, you know, like a top 10, what we choose to, uh, to get into surf casting. Um, obviously, some of these lures could catch more fish than others. So just choosing like a top 10 that's going to deliver the most and cost you the least. We're going to kind of run through those. So um, starting off with my weapon of choice. This is a ODM DNA 9.6. So this thing is rated, I believe it's one to four ounces or three quarter to four. Um, and it just does like everything for me. I have found myself just, this is my weapon of choice. Uh, we've got this paired up with a Van Stahl VS 150. It's a classic Goldie, love it. Old school, love it. Uh, 30 pound braid on this. And then this is 50 pound fluorocarbon leader, three feet or so is all I really run. And I have not fished without TA clips in probably a, 10 years or so. Absolutely love them. They, um, they've they caught me so many fish just off the fact that I, I can change lures. They find something that's working really, really quick. Um, and obviously saves me a lot of money on fluorocarbon because I'm not chopping inches out of that. When I'm walking out on the beach, everything I need fits in this little guy. Super simple, really easy. I like said, this is that Daiwa fluorocarbon that I'm using. I've fallen in love with these guys this year. It's the new uh, GT Eel little, um, what is these, five inch paddle tails. This is the purple color. I need to restock. 75 pound TA clips. Well waterlogged, rusty paper clip there. And then as a little backup, I got Yozuri HD Carbon. This is a 30 pound liter, just in case I end up on the flats or a finicky fish if I do end up going during the daytime. And then... What are these bags? What is this? This is... So this was the, the, the leash that I had going to my fish gripper That's that right. is... Uh, blown up. That's blown blown up. up. Yeah, uh, pretty blown dry up. Dry rod or anything rusty. Else again. Super dry Salt rod rusty. Jair. And then... Uh, Crazy. Little th three quarter ounce uh, GT Eel jig heads. Um, okay. This is everything I need. I love these guys. And I'll run the same jig heads on the, uh, the straight tail eels. I fish a lot in the nine and a half inch version of those. And then as you can see, all the treble hooks that I've had to cut out of my bag, it's, uh, it's got some holes in it. This thing's been through it, Jeez, but, um, but it's earned it. It's earned it. The thing is, is a champ. And uh, I'm like sentimentally attached to this thing because we've spent so much time together. Oh, oh hey! hey, hey. Right. And then let's just crack this thing open. It's an absolute um, kind of a mess, to be totally honest, but whatever, you know, I'm too busy fishing to organize it. So, again, uh, nine and a half inch GT Eel. I think this is the purple color from those same three and a half, or, uh, three quarter ounce jig heads. That I fixed this morning. Yep. Fire. You, you, well, yeah. I fixed it. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, I'll give it to him, I'll give it to him. And then this is that, those same paddle tails. Um, I went through, these things were actually crushing. Fish weren't super huge, um, so it made it so much easier for me to catch and release with these guys. I don't need to turn on my headlamp so you guys aren't creeping down on me. Okay. Um, and it just makes it so much easier for the fish too, I'm not doing as much damage. Um, I love them. So they've been uh, working very, very well. Obviously, I'm gonna have a bajillion minnows in here. Um, so, this is a little uh, dark mullet, I think, is the Yozuri. And this is that dark ghost. This one's brand new. I think last night was like the first time out with it. No hook rash. Uh, barely any hook rash. Yeah, that's like the telltale sign that it's like first night out. Yeah, it's fresh. It's freshy fresh. Um, so, we just got uh, Super Strike in the shop this summer. Um, this is the floating. What is it, six inch or whatever it is, the Ely color. Ah. This thing slams. And then the little baby bait, uh, the red eyed um, super strikes are sinking. And this little blurple one is a hot slammer. I like that uh, small profile. All right. Um, I have been hitting the canal because it was super hot last week. I found this <laughs> little jam. This is a mystic uh, little twitch bait. These things are awesome. And uh, being a catch and release guy, it's nice having the one treble and just the flag on the back. Okay. But um, happy as a clam, minnow cruiser. This thing has gotten smacked. 
Um, I absolutely love these guys. Probably one of my best casting lures, and it's under two ounces. So I absolutely love these guys. And just having the one hook on the back makes it really easy for catch and release. Um, and definitely one of my best casters in the bag. The only one that probably beats it is the Ziggy. And I think we've all crushed on this thing. I think everybody that's got one of these things is pretty hook crashed up. And that's not because the finish isn't good. That's because these things smack. And uh, I think this is 2.3 ounces. So, um, you know, cast well by design, but just, I, I don't push it over three or maybe three and a quarter with this 9.6, but this is probably my best caster. And uh, if the wind is howling, that is probably my number one choice. Um, all right, let's, I wedged all these minnows in here. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. All right. Eight kajillion SP. Eight kajillion. So, Bone Yozuri, um, Wonder Bread Yozuri. I mean, I think Tim and I will both say that uh, the Wonder Bread's probably most slept on. Yeah, that's my favorite. And then, um, and then my wow. favorite. Oh Silver my Slammer. Goodness. It's barely purple, but you know what though? They don't care. Um, so that's kind of like what I'm running with. I would rather have backups of the lures that I have faith in than have a bunch of stuff that I never throw. So that's, that's it for me. Super simple, super small. Um, that's what I'm rocking with. Boom. Tim, what do you uh, what All are you right. doing? All right, yeah. so what Tim's got. So what Tim's I got a nine foot DNA on here, uh, similar to Ian's, a little shorter. I think it's rated to one half to three and a half ounces, so it's a little lighter than Ian's. Um, same reel, I got a 150. Don't have the gold, but uh, still pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I got a GT reel on there right now, the nine and a half inch. I like the swim bait hooks they come with. Uh, same weight as Ian's. Um, they cast pretty good and they run a little shallower, I think, than the jig head does. Well, just a little different action on there. Um, I run 30 pound braid and then I use an Albright knot to attach my leader. Oh, fire, um, fire, fire. I think this is. 50 because I borrowed some from Ian the other oh, day. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Get him out of here. But He's trash. Get him out. I normally fish uh, 40 pounds. Oh, same yeah. dio stuff. Comes in a great little case. It's just easy to unspool that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I also have some, some skin. TA clips in this pocket here. Running out because bluefish. And uh, green brown, West End Spring, <laughs> baby. Uh, we'll get you every <laughs> time. It's nice to have some stuff in the bag that has single hooks. Yeah, I like the no live bait needed. Um, three quarter ounce jig head's probably my favorite. Ooh. They got the screw lock on there, Tell it just them. seems to stay on there a little better. Talk to them, throw a little uh. What's it called? Super glue, zap a gap on there. That's going to stay on there for a bunch of fish. Always carry a white bucktail. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice it. to have a little trail off here. I think this is a six inch round Z. Fire. But any, oh, yeah, sort, of, that's, uh, that's the any sort of curly tail will do great with that. And that's just a great thing to always have in the bag. I think that's all I have for jigs in there. Um, yeah, I got a little bit bigger bag than Ian, but I basically carry. I always like to carry one darker SP. It's probably my favorite color. All right. Oh, man, so got the black on oh, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always carry a bone. <laughs> always carry a bone there. And then uh, same thing with the Ozeris. I like to carry just two different colors. Jesus, so boy. All tangled up here. But I got, um, I always carry the Wonder Bread. Like I was saying, um, Ian was saying earlier, oh. that's probably my favorite. Ah, gored up here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. It all tail hooks. Hey, just keep it real. Gore hooks. Dar uh, this is the darker uh, Yozuri here. Uh -huh. Big fan of that guy. Bone Hill. Uh, it's just nice to have two different colors and everything. You don't know. Um, less moonlight, generally darker colors. I like to carry one smaller pencil if they're on some smaller bait. Um, sometimes that's the ticket. Like Ian was saying. Um, huge fan of the Ziggy. This guy's been through it, been beat up. Um, they cast great, and the action, they just go crazy on top of the water. Um, rusted hooks, because I use that probably the most out of anything. Jeez, boy. And then you got the big dog here. 
Uh, slippery juice. squid weighs about three ounces, casts a mile, and the best thing about them is they float. So on my nine footer, I can still work it without really having a real super fast and occasional pause or something. Um, it's great to have in the bag. And you know, I don't always carry a needle fish, but I've been getting into it here. Um, just like Ian, but this is a slow sinking with the yellow eye. Um, I'm a big fan of ELE. Anything with a white bottom seems to do well for me. And that's basically what I got in here. I always carry one popper. That's a super strike little neck. Um, just cause if they're finicky, I can pause it or if it's calmer water, that's something I like to throw. And then, you know, the secret Nosset slammer is wounded soldier. I feel like it's a slept on color. Um, you know, when we're having a new moon uh, coming up shortly. So this is something I'm gonna be throwing a lot the next couple days. And that's basically all I got in my bag. Um, one other thing, I think it's a good idea to carry the fish grips. Um, it's nice to the fish, you get them in faster, it's also good for you. Hold the fish so you can take out the trebles without those little guys putting a treble in your hand. Um, just do you a favor, do the fish a favor. And the last thing I always carry is a can of bug spray. Is my bug spray there, you need that. Because um, those little no seams will tear you up sometimes if there's no wind. So. Well, power your drift, guys. Yeah. I definitely uh, knew somebody that bailed on a spot because the bugs were eating them up the other night. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is Wayne's setup. I'm pretty trash. I forgot my bag today inside my house. I live right down the street, so didn't grab it because I'm lazy, but whatever. But another 150 gang. It's the best size for any kind of nine foot, nine six, any kind of light rod. This is an OG St. Croix Triumph. I freaking love this rod. I've gotten too many 40 inches on it to even count. So I like a nice medium powered rod with this. And uh, then I have a 20 pound braid actually on this, which is pretty sweet. Um, I like it, you can cast really far. I like it just with over sand. If I know I'm in rocks, I'll bump up to my 200 vanny and my 10 footer. And then uh, I have 30 pound HD carbon on this with TA clip as everybody else does too. It's pretty common to do that. And uh, now and then, uh, let's see what else. Since I don't have my bag, these are some of the lures that we all kind of put together. And these are ones I really like. Obviously, Super Strike. Sick that we actually have these in here now. Super Strike, we wanted to get them and we finally got them. We're supposed to be getting a ton more. I brought these paps in because the guy left his card and nobody noticed it on the counter. I was like, what is this? Wood custom lures? Come on. Come on, happy as a clam with a rod in my hands. Like, come on, you can't get better than that. You know, this guy, he's been making lures, he's 82 years old. Come in and buy the, come on. Uh, you know? Give him the support. Yeah, I'm with Matt. You know, and then yeah. this one, you know, Zuri, this is an overslept, underslept. I don't even know what I'm talking about. This is a lure that is just needs to be bought because it's sick. It's like a darter. It's like a swimming plug. It has great action on it, and it has a great price of 20 bucks. Uh, it comes with great hardware, great hooks, you know, so that's a, that's a really good plug I really like. And then uh, for any kind of uh, interchanging with split rings, 80 pound is perfect. And uh, BKK 2 on 3 out hooks is fantastic as well. And I've really been liking these soft plastics as well as the days come in where there's a lot of sand eels. And Bill Hurley is goaded. There's nobody better. There's Bears. nobody better in the soft plastic game than Bill Hurley. He has all the oils injected and all his stuff. He's a stinky guy. He's, he's great, you know. So fish. If, uh, he's working fishy. So I like Bill Hurley a lot. The best action on all the soft plastics is uh, the dog days come in. you got to be a little more finesse with that and local, stuff. You know? And local, which is the best. And it's a lot of time. is uh, eel time. Uh, I plan on using some eels this weekend. And uh, this is a great uh, rod for eel. And it's nice and light. And uh, it's got a light line, light leader, you know, where you can really let them swim. I usually like to use uh, little hooks, uh, but extra live bait series. They're a little heavier, so with the uh, head of the hook, or when you put it into the head of the eel, it just kind of makes them dive down. I don't really like the bigger hooks. Uh, it makes them kind of just do whatever they want. And if you want to get on the bottom and kind of get into the current, they kind of cooperate and get down better, which is, which is good, which, which I like that. But uh, I never use sinkers or anything like that, but I just let them run free in creeks and stuff. And so that's coming up too, so that's exciting with the new moon and everything like that. 
And uh, anyway, I wish I had my bag here. I got a lot of custom plugs I wasn't oh, able to show geez. off. We're gonna kind of fire. But uh, you know, I'm you know I'm just a bum, so. <laughs> Wayne's oh, oh, so got as many nice plugs as I do. Yeah. Hey, I boys, Wayne, they won't. I got you know tons of plugs at home. I got milk crates. Maybe I'll do another video of Wayne's plugs that he's got milk crates because uh, I got millions of them. Like, so got four yeah. or five crates of all of so. Some good old classics too. Good old yeah. classics. A lot of found on the beach. People have given to me. I've spent forty, fifty dollars on some of them because you know, Jesus, I got a problem. Yeah, that boy. <laughs> So, I mean, I think that uh, all of our combos, when it comes down to it, are a little bit on the pricier side of things. The fact of the matter is that um, vannies are, are an investment quality reel, but they are kind of expensive. Um, so not for everybody. We kind of want to get more people into the sport. And the fact of the matter is that everybody's got like, you know, over $1,000 to spend on a rod. You know, and it's, it's nice for us because we do a lot of it. But um, the fact of the matter is that a lot of people are doing once, maybe twice a week, maybe at that. Um, so something that gets you out there on the beach and catching fish. Um, these tsunamis are great. This is a trophy too. Um, what? So, I mean, this thing, this is a 10 footer, lighter, medium action, but this is a hundred bucks. So I think that, you know, even a 10 foot medium heavy, you're talking like not over 150. So it gets you out there on the beach for not um, blowing a huge budget. And then, um, that was a sick roll. Everybody yeah. was buying those last And, and low-key, so, so slept on. Um, I mean, the entry-level rod that you're getting when I first started fishing, compared to now, is like massive difference. So just the entry-level technology, the trickle-down is huge. So you're going to pick up one of these uh, Trophy 2s for around 100 bucks, give or take. And you're gonna think that you're fishing a $300 rod. Is that an so, over-the-counter swap too? That's over-the-counter swap too. So um, within reason, as long as it's like a manufactured defect, we're doing over-the-counter here. So um, you walk in, and within reason, you're walking out with a rod to hit the beach tonight. Um, something on the more value price uh, scale on the reels to match up with that trophy too. I am probably a little bit more of a Shimano guy, but. You can't argue with spin spent for 5,500. Um, probably a little heavy for a nine footer, but you could totally do it. 10 footer, 10 six, this thing is like perfectly at home. Um, the 45 is good for nines too. Yeah, and good. the 4,500 for nines, and it's um, the 4,500 is considerably lighter too. Um, so it makes a nice uh, nine foot um, combo for walking the beach, not feeling um, like you're you know, casting something that weighs too heavy, you know? Um, but these are awesome. Put 30 pound or 40 pound braid on these. It gets you out on the beach for what these are like two bills. So for for um, the waterproofing ability of these guys, they're really um, you know a great entry level, medium level reel. You know, bales kit on those too. Yeah, you yeah. You can down the line, pen. put a yep. slammer handle on. Yeah, it. my buddy's got a forty five hundred that's bailless with a slammer handle on it, and it's a sweet little reel, um, and just so much fun to fish. And like I said, for the price, you can't really beat it. The nice big beefy bale and uh, relatively waterproof. Um, you know, if you want to show out, like you're getting close to the three bill mark um, in the pen range, these Slammer 3s, these DX ones, um, not only are they a really solid reel, I think they look really good too. Um, nice big power knob with the middle knob here. Um, and again, all the pens have got a pretty beefy bail, you know? Super tough. Go for jetties, drop them and everything like that. Stainless gears in those uh, DXs too, so Bats. pretty good against the water. Yep. And then, uh, you know, pretty much everybody's favorite, Shimano Sarah. The Go, stable, so. stable, stable, oh. stable. Oh. Oh. 10 foot DNA. Oh. 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 That's because of us at the Ghost. That's facts. Um, <laughs> they look awesome. I love the handle on these guys. This is probably like my choice for for under four bills. This is this is it. I think these are 269, I believe it is. Um, and then something, you know, your investment quality is a Vanny. Like we said, we're pretty much all 150 gang right here. And then 200 is the perfect uh, matchup for like a 10 footer, as Sam knows, Mr. 10 footer. 200. DNA on there, I love my DNA. 10 yeah. footer with that 200, it's nice. It's a, it's a hot slammer. And when you're throwing like bigger pencils, throwing big plugs on, on big surf, that's obviously like the choice of, you know? Um, so yeah. this is basically like a basic rundown um of all of our surf setups and what we would choose to to get into the game of surf casting um i wish you guys the best of luck
tight lines and uh, come into the goose, talk to the boys. If you guys need any help with anything, we will be more than happy to uh, to rig you up from start to finish. Have a great day, guys. Peace.